the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God, I mean, as you probably follow the, the gospel, today's gospel actually one of the major issue in every generation. They struggle with one very simple question: what, what will be the sign of the end of life? So many books written about the sign of the end of life. All of us will have to know what will be the sign of the end of life. And I call this is a dilemma of every generation. From, from the time of Jesus until now, everybody will come and tell you, by the way, here is the sign of the end of life. And today actually is a beautiful scene. Our Lord God, the Savior Jesus Christ, was inside the temple teaching. While he's walking outside of the temple, going to the Mount of Olives, one of his disciples asked him, do you see this beautiful building here, the temple? And they said the temple was one of the beautiful, a huge building and a very nice building. For the Lord actually prophesied and said to him, you see this temple here? Not even one stone will stay on the top of each other. Then he went and he sat on the Mount of Olives. Then privately, Kida, some of his disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, it seemed like you know everything, Jesus. You are the Messiah. You already told me about this great building here, and you already prophesied that this building will not stand. This building will be destroyed one day. And they asked him, tell us what will be the sign, and this will, when this will happen, it will be the sign of the end of life. And all of us actually, so many books, I was actually reading a book about eschatology, which is uh, life after death or the end of life talks about what, when will be the last day of this life here on earth. And Jesus started to actually talk to them about a few things. He lists for them exactly what will happen. And that's why if somebody have a dilemma with your heart, you do not know what will be the son of end of life, read Mark 13 and Matthew 24. That's why next week when you come, you will listen to the same gospel. Our Lord God spoke to them and said to them what will happen to the world and the nature will be so many war, nation against each other. Nation will divide among themselves. Also what will happen to the nature will be earthquake, and famine and hunger everywhere. And then after that, he actually prophesies what will happen to Jerusalem itself. How, Jeru how the temple will be destroyed. And this is happening in the year 68 AD. And he spoke to them about the false Christ and the false prophets. Then in the end, he explained to them the coming of our Lord God, Savior Jesus Christ, when he said to them, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars of heaven will be fallen, the power of heaven will be shaken, then they will see the Son of Man is coming in his glory to judge the living and the dead. So basically, our Lord God, Savior Jesus Christ, laid for them what will be the end of life, what are the signs of the end of life. But in the end of the gospel, by the way, if you noticed, we give a beautiful conclusion. That's why I want to talk about today, the conclusion of today's gospel. He said to them, take heed, watch, and pray, for no one know the day or the hour which is the Son of Man is coming. And before that, he did three things. Number one, he confirmed to them that what I say to you is true. Sometimes all of us, when you think a little bit and use your mind say, are you sure this will be the end of life here on earth? There will be, when we go to the beach and see how beautiful the beach is, there will be no more life here? No, no, no. Some people will doubt even the coming of Christ. That's why some people deal with the coming of Christ. They said, no, it will never happen. Some other people will be ready for it, will prepare themselves. For our Lord God, Savior Jesus Christ, they confirm that it will happen. When he said, in today's gospel, Mark 13, verse 31, he said, Heaven and earth passes away, but my words will by no means passes away. This is a confirmation that what I'm telling you is true. What I'm telling you, it will happen. What I'm telling you, that will happen one day. For therefore, our Lord God, God and Savior Jesus Christ, explain to them what will be the sign of the end of life. But the first, he told them, look, what I'm telling you right now is true. It will happen. And he said to them, and he gave them so many evidence. So many people actually doubt the coming of Christ. So many people doubt even that will be another life after death. 
And we always come in the end of the creed and we say, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the coming ages to come. But today, our Lord God, the Savior Jesus Christ, confirming that, you know what, heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will by no means pass away. And that's what faith comes. That's what faith comes. You hear about many things. Sometimes when you try to make sense, that's what faith comes. Sometimes we always use our mind and our faith. That's what faith. That's why St. Paul actually explained him when he said in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1, he said, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not seeing. The evidence of things that will happen one day. That's why Jesus is telling our Lord God, Savior Jesus Christ is telling us, do not doubt. Do not doubt that that will be an end of this life here. Number two, he said, don't worry about the day or the time. Don't even buy any books to read about what will happen. Because he said in verse 32, he said, that day and that hour, no one knows, even the angel of the Lord, even the Son of Man. Therefore, do not worry about it. Do not worry about the day, which our Lord God, Savior Jesus Christ, is telling us, I'm confirming this will happen. But yet I'm telling you, do not worry about it. Do not worry about the day. Because the day of the Lord will come, like as he explained in many parables, like a thief. It will happen suddenly. A day that you will not expect. And one day in the Lord's time, equal to a thousand years. A thousand years in the Lord's time is equal one day. And that's why in the, the day of the Lord will come as a surprise. It will be a surprise. They said in uh, uh, the time, during Lot's time, St. Luke chapter 17, verse 28, is today, during the time of Lot, after the Lord explained to him that will be, uh, to tell him to t leave him and his wife, her family, they said, while, this is in Luke chapter 17, verse 28, he said, likewise, at, it was in the time of Lot, and that day they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were working, they were selling, they were buying, and suddenly a fire came from heaven. For the day of the Lord will be a surprise for us. For do not worry about the time and the day. Do not bother with the time and the day. But think about one thing about your own salvation. And that's why in Revelation chapter 22 verse 7 he said, Behold, I am coming quickly. And the day of the Lord could be today for me or you. The day that we live this life here could be any time. For therefore, he said, I'm confirming this will happen. Number two, do not worry about the time. Do not worry about the day. For the day and the hour, no one knows except God himself. Number three, he said to them, watch and pray. And this is the main message to us. He said, take heed, watch and pray. For you do not know neither the day nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. A strong message. This is Mark chapter 13, verse 33. Take heed. You know what take heed when you look at the word in dictionary, actually? Take heed means listen and pray and pay attention. Take heed means listen to God's message. Listen to my voice. Not only that you have to listen, but pay attention to it. That's why today's message, take heed. Do not worry about what will happen. Do not worry about, you see, you hear about wars, you hear about earthquake, you think, oh, this is the day, the day, that's it. No, do not worry about that. But take heed means listen and pay attention to God's message. Number two, he said, watch. Also, when you look at the word watch means, watch means observe to look and keep looking. That's what watch means. Watch means observe to look and keep looking. Be alert. Do not give yourself a rest. Pray. Follow the Lord. Seek your salvation. Get close to God. They so say, take heed, which means listen and pray. Watch means observe and keep watching and keep looking. Be alert. Number three, he said, pray. Pray. And you ask yourself, why only he mentioned pray? What, why the Lord did not say, just only also follow me, Watch, take it and watch and follow me and make sure you follow me. Pray. Because honestly, praying is the only way you will help us to get close to God. Prayer will help, will help us to connect to God. Prayer will help us to know God. You want to know God? Just learn how to pray. That's one of the fathers said. A true theologian, the one who pray, and the one who pr prays, he is a true theologian. You want to know the mystery of God? 
You want to know the mystery of our Lord God? God, just one thing. Learn to pray. Learn to pray. For that's why today is the day. Take heed, watch, and pray. Pray. Do not stop every night before you sleep. Watch and keep looking and pray to the Lord. Pray. Prayer always have four objects. Number one, or four characters. One prayer, we sometimes we pray because we are requesting something for God. Sometimes, when we pray, also we pray to praise God. Sing to the Lord and praise God. We pray to intercede. Ask God forgiveness for our sins. But also one of the main characteristics of prayer, you pray to know God, to know God. To establish a relationship with God. Because how can you really, when you meet somebody, you just suddenly when you meet somebody, you do not know that person. But once you meet with each other a couple of times, many times, you establish an intimate relationship together. And the only way will help us to have this intimacy with God through one thing, through a prayer. But that's why today's message, do not worry what will happen to the world, what will happen to the nature, when the second coming will happen, false prophets, false, uh, uh, false Christ will come. But the key number one, I'm confirming what I'm telling you is true. Number two, do not worry about the time, do not worry about the hour, but actually every day it could be the last day in your life here, but therefore seek the Lord. Number three, take heed, take heed, watch and pray. I hope all of us, really, especially when you come next week, you will, you will hear the same message, but it will be from Matthew chapter 24. And the wisdom of the church, they do that because in the end of the Coptic year, always tell us, talk to us about the end of life, but therefore, a message to all of us, end of the Coptic year, beginning of college life and new school life, beginning 9-11 uh, is coming. So remind us, you know what? Anyone can leave this life any minute. That day, 3,000 people passed away that day. But therefore, take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know neither the day or the hour which is the Son of Man of God. I wanted to give you a very sp simple spiritual exercise this week until you get here next week. I want to every day this week to pray. That's what the main message is. Take heed, watch, and when you pray, keep watching. Pray to get to know God. Pray to establish a relationship with Him, with God. Pray to tell God, you know what? I want to know you. God bless you, God be with you, and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are they.